this be one of the best moments of your life. You're listening to the Business Mirror Podcast for a broader look on business with Senior Editor Dennis Estopase. I'm Dennis Estopase and welcome to Tuesdays with Tito, a podcast to be anchored by Tito Valiente, one of the hundred honorees in the centenary of Philippine cinema and columnist for the Business Mirror newspaper. Mr. Valiente will share with us one of the many pieces he wrote for his column titled Annotations, which is published every Friday in the op-ed section of the Business Mirror. We hope you enjoy your Tuesday with Tito. From Scraps, Our Nation's History History can be built from scraps. A book is telling me that presently. Courtesans and fish cakes the consuming passions of classical Athens is that book. Written by James Davidson, it is a title that does not bring any imagery of ancient Greece, used as we are to reading books and documents about this said civilization with lofty and grand frontispiece. But what is immediately enticing about this said book is its cover. Davidson writes of that cover as a mosaic art called the unswept floor made by the most famous musicists sosos across the white background is an even scattering of debris a wishbone a claw some fruit various discarded limbs of sea creatures the remains of a fish Davidson's analysis illuminates further what we can see and should see on the piece. But the floor is not really the subject at all. Like his approach to history, which does not rely on formal elevated documentations, the use of the cover indicates an interest in something else, with sources ignored because they are not part of the canon. Davidson asks us to look at, quote, Scraps that have fallen from tables of ancient literature, snatches of conversation, anecdotes abruptly curtailed, and stories that seem to make no sense. Strangely enough, the problem of scholars with ancient civilizations has also become our problem. How to write our histories when the archives historians are beholden to are located somewhere else. Realize this. Our history as written owes its power to two nations that brought literacy connecting us to the reading world. They were colonizing nations that happened to teach because it was a default act. From then on, inscription was vetted by Western scholarship and pedagogy. The non-literate aspect of our civilization was conquered, vanquished, and thrown aside. The binary created was illiterate versus literate. Nowhere in this configuration can be located the non-literate even as we had our own syllabaries. No evidence that is a tragic outcome of this colonized world. No wonder even martial law has lost its evidence. On August 8, 2019, Jovi Marie de la Cruz wrote here in Business Mirror this piece of news, and I quote, Sandigan junks 102 billion peso case versus Marcus's. The news stated, and I quote, in a 67-page ruling dated August 5, the Sandigambayan 2nd Division said the Republic of the Philippines, represented by the Presidential Commission on Good Government, has failed to present evidence against the Marcuses and 11 others. The photo accompanying the news shows Imelda Marcos blowing the candles on her birthday cake. Everyone practically was wearing red. The image does not illustrate the news but rather creates a tension between the ultimately tragic injustice 
for those who believe in the Marcus dictatorship and the deceit and malevolence of martial rule and the celebration and joy of those who perpetrated and perpetuated the oppression. This lack of evidence or even the absence of evidence is present in our histories. The days following the 1986 People Power Revolution was followed by the demarcusification of places, objects, and persons in our nation. This was talked about. Given what we have now, a systematic purging of what the martial law generations have ingested was not accomplished. Unlike the court, which did not see a preponderance of evidence, we have places and acts utilized for the full return of the dictator's family and associates. First, there was the comeback, facilitated by an administration run by a president who, by kinship and management, was linked to martial law years. Second, Marcus was laid to rest. Rest is the crucial term here, in the site reserved for heroes and patriots. Third, the Marcuses were elected into power. All are evidences of the goodness of those years, formal, authoritative, and forbidding. On our side, what we do have are scraps from the table of events, leftovers from great parties, whispers, and rumors. Note for the fact that rumor mongering was a crime during martial law. Not historical discourse, but rumors are our salvation from forgetting. Our generation that witnessed martial law killings and disappearances could also be blamed. We were coward enough to forget the banalities of the bad and the ugly in our midst as we are coward at present to remember those sad, sorrowful years of perverted ruling. We need to imagine, to remember, and to memorize the unwritten and the shadows of those years. The reports contained in the government archives are suspect. The newspapers, or those allowed to publish openly, are crimes against truths in the making. The statistics collated by government functionaries are pernicious objects against which we can only imagine. The words of Michel Foucault, whose trench and historicizing looms over the perspectives of courtesan and fish cakes, is of utmost relevance. Quote, the imaginary is not formed in opposition to reality as its denial or compensation. It grows among signs from book to book in the interstices of repetitions and commentaries. It is born and takes shape in the interval between books. In the discourse of cultural renaissance, we find in the gaps monuments like the ghastly and ghost-rich Manila Film Center, the cultural center of the Philippines, eternally monolithic and centralized, the folk art center which has nothing to do with folkways, the reclamation of a bay and the death of sea, the rise of hotels in just a few months to house technocrats and bureaucrats, the slums and squatters hidden by artists from those who would think we were poor, the coconut palace, a caricature for a pope who did not sleep there during his visit. You could add more, the canonization of a saint in time for the visit of a pope, the film festivals with porn to make suffering people forget, the militarization of the bureaucracy and civil service still alive today, and the poverty that continues not as a curse, but as a byproduct of those who salivate at the thought of the strongman as the greatest concept in political science. As for dictators and bad rulers, they rise always from the ashes of forgetfulness. Thank you 
for listening to the Business Mirror Podcast for a broader look on business. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Business Mirror. Until next time.